Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. What message exactly has President Buhari sent out with the composition of his current Federal Executive Council? With quite a number of people from the former cabinet making a return, are Nigerians in for more of the same? And from the angle of partisan politics, is the ruling or progressives Congress walking its talk, which was encapsulated in the change mantra upon which it swept to power in 2015? Would the main opposition, People's Democratic Party, have been able to do better under the prevailing circumstances? A lot of questions because of this we are now being joined by Chief Emma Ogidi, a national vice chairman of People's Democratic Party in the South-South geopolitical zone, who will also be giving us his thoughts on the rumblings in some party chapters, in some state chapters of his party, and perennial restiveness in his native oil-rich Niger Delta region. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome to the morning. Yeah, we're still there. We're no more restive. Well, we had, we had two guests on this program who were saying that the issues of the Niger Delta have not yet been resolved. No, and that resolved. Nigeria faces the risk of another round of militancy not in the resolved. Niger Delta. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but let's start with uh, what is the, where Tundo started from. Yeah. What's your reading of the composition and of the... Uh, cabinet that was inaugurated yesterday by President Buhari, particularly with, the, with regard to the distribution of uh, portfolios. Every other geopolitical region has ministers of state. The Northwest does not have uh, a minister of state. They have only senior ministers. And there have been complaints about <laughs> equity and fair play. The, the lawyer, not the lawyer, that's when you go to the courts or equity, you go with clean you wash your hands. There's no, the man has never pretended. President Buhari has never pretended to be a Democrat. That military is still in him. And you can't blame him, too. It's been like that all, all along. In fact, he was on retirement. Then some hustling politician with a wake him up, brought him to the arena. That's, what's, that's what we're serving today. The mandate, he says, he stole it. He didn't win that election. If you go to Abuja today, people are still unhappy. But they didn't vote for him. In fact, I'm so surprised. We are no longer scared. I was listening to a radio program two days ago, uh, 104, they call it 104.5, Love FM. You need to hear what they were saying. To the extent that one of the man said, I'm the classmate of Buhari, but I don't have a certificate. They are jesting. But let's come back to the reality. We are in a very, very serious problem today. Are you talking about the ministers? <laughs> anyway, we are praying that the judges will be bold enough to take their decisions that the Nigerian people expect. They should do the right thing. Well, before go. we go to the tribunal, I wanted to ask you about the minister for the Niger Delta, God's Will Akpabio, and his minister for state, Festus Keyamo. How do you see the their selection for that particular portfolio. But the two of them knew that their temporary job don't last. You know? We are going back, we are going to take our mandate. That's the mandate of the people. But the two of them, ah, I would not like to say much about them. They're my brothers. No, but the point we made earlier on this program is that what uh, President Buhari has done with regard to the Ministry of the Niger Data is very tactical. He has made two persons from that part of the country, uh, minister and minister of state. So what moral justification will anybody from Niger Delta have to still complain about anything when they have two major rep uh, representatives holding on more, to the ministry? Because it's going to be funded. Excuse me? It will not be funded. That ministry will not be funded. How? How are you saying that? So How many ministers has he funded? Check the last four years. Check what was in the budget and what was actually received. Check it. Well, what, would, what would you say are the demands of the Niger Delta people right now that regardless of sentiment towards the people appointed to this ministry, what would you say are the real problems that no matter what they need to take the ground running on to actually focus on and solve for the economic prosperity of that region? Creating job opportunity. It's the government that will create opportunity. When they give us a, a money market, I mean, what do you call it? that money, no. But, the, but an environment. You see, I was listening to Mogalu and others who have been talking. Um, 
where you talk about the, uh, the ban on food, important things like that. When you know your headsmen have made farmers not to go to the farm, we have not seen what's going to happen yet. It's going to be very serious. They couldn't plant. They couldn't harvest. So you have created more problem. What we need is an environment. Then we can go and do things. Young men have started going to the farm, unlike before. But with all these attack by headsmen and uh, bandits and terrorists, it killed that, killed that business. And we are laughing. But I thank God, I think police have just woken up because they killed that. They said they've caught the, 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 so, that notorious man. Uh, yes, the uh, alleged uh, well, kidnap kingpin. Okay. Yeah. But the man started talking. That the, the Sanko were removed the, the, the army headquarters. Very disgraceful. I used to have a very high regard for the army, but you can see them. Let me follow up with, on the uh, question that Leila asked about yeah. the Niger Delta. Yeah. Recently, the chairman of the uh, Revenue uh, Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission you know, said that uh, Nigeria will take a second look at the revenue allocation yeah. formula. Uh, he has since uh, last week set up a committee. And there have been many inputs. Some people saying the states should get up to 45% uh, or even more, and that derivation uh, should also be increased. Uh, what are your thoughts about revenue allocation formula? No. Do you think the states deserve more money or that the uh, local councils deserve more money? You know, the other day I was listening uh, to the Senate discussion where um, the Madi was saying the states have too much money that have done nothing. What is too much money? You see, the state, the local government are the actual operators of the, of the country, if you ask me. Abuja is just where you go to your sign corner, you pick the money and run away, you don't even do anything. We need to devolve power. Well, if truly they want to give us money, that's also part of devolving the power. When you start removing money, so much money for the federal, to give to the state and local government. You see, there are some local, take my state for the Delta State. There are some local government that cannot meet the expenditures. The state government used to add and fund them. Now you are, saying, you are giving them money directly. Fine, they're getting their money. What happened to them? Is the state government to gain with their mega reserve? But it's not enough. Because they did. And unfortunately, the terrain in our area is horrible. You have to spend more money to fix it. In fact, the more you fix it, the more the terrain, the environment is giving us problems. But thank God my governor in Delta, uh, Okoa, went inside the river there to do something. So I didn't know he could do it. Built roads. Yet, people are saying they are doing nothing. But after doing the roads, won't the people eat? We have a huge problem. We want to bring the infrastructure, we want to do everything, but won't the people eat? They have to eat. They cannot go to fish. Because the, the river is polluted. Meanwhile, you can take the oil from our locality to Lagos and then you ship it out. To Bonny, you ship it out. And then you say, hey, Minister of State, Kachuku was there, did he walk? They couldn't let him walk. The operations is at the, the GMD's table. You know this well, story. we do hope that the Minister of Environment can come in and really do some kind of environmental cleanup. But I wanted to talk to you about the recent statements from PDP's national chairman, Pris Uche Secondus, yeah. regarding the Kogi and Bielsa elections yeah. in November. And he advised each candidate to really work on the delegates and said that the NWC yeah. is not going to help them. What do we take from this regarding how the party primaries are going to be run? No, you, you see, uh, that time goes like, uh, like what they said when they, I was there yesterday when they made those uh, comments. You know, we have raised the bar, we have set the high standard. We communicated in the convention. We told them, look, don't be worried, because in Bayesa, 21 aspirants came up. Kogi, uh, 13. You know, things like that, uh, there's going to be some apprehension. But it's not so. The aspirants in Bayasa, the whole meeting, surprisingly, they told us yesterday 
that whatever affects one affects all. And then they know that it's only one man that will win. But what they want is that give us a free and fair environment. And we have assured them. I'm sure you've seen in social media where people are saying that it's going to be violent. No. These are some of the things people say. Trust the APC that they invaded it. Yeah, they, they just want to, nothing like that one, by the grace of God. Because you see, let me tell you, when they came for screening, and I looked at the log, I said, wow. Just look at the level of uh, high profile men we have in the state. I'm so happy. I'm partly by ESA. So all of them are eminently qualified. But it's only one of them that will emerge. And then they have assured us that as long as the process is uh, clean, free and fair, they're going to work as a team. And the governor also said he was going to lead the campaign. Because Bayesa is a PDP state. So let nobody think uh, something else will happen. What about Kogi State? Of course, too. Uh, you know, well, <laughs> yes. Kogi is going to be very interesting. A lot of people have also accused... Um accused the president of being very of or the way he's um, appointed the, his ministers. They said that the main ministries, the biggest ministries, have all gone to the northwest. And this has been listed out. What is your take on this as well? Do you but, think that the president but, 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 has been But I'm not surprised. Like, like that. What are you, how are you acting? It's real. It's real. You see, if a president, let's face it, is, is the minister of one minister. He doesn't need to bring a member from the state again. You don't need. Because you are the head minister. But unfortunately, in concluding this, you said they should have walked through the uh, chief of staff. Uh, we didn't vote for chief of staff. So when the wife was saying there's a cabal there, he has already said the, 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 the statement is correct. It's a cabal now. He is not fit and it's not a fit person. You know, I came in on uh, the mantra of uh, integrity. <laughs> Has he shown it now? But Job, in the Bible, Job chapter 27, verse 5, has said, God forbid I should lose my integrity. Till I die, I will not let it go. So I have to interrupt you here, sir. We'll just take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. We're still with Chief Emma Ogidi, National Vice Chairman of the PDP, South-South Geopolitical Zone. I am not the chief. Oh, the elder. Brother Emma Ogidi. Oh, I, I do apologize. I am not in that. I stand, I stand okay. corrected, Ogidi, sir. Yeah. Earlier on, you were referring to our mandate, the mandate of the yes. people, yes. and what you expect the judges to do. Yes. Are you really uh, optimistic that... Uh, the case that the presidential election petition tribunal will go the way of the PDP and its presidential yes. candidate, uh, particularly as the uh, Supreme Court recently just uh, more or less struck out uh, the petition with regard to INEX server. No, 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 no. In fact, it's just that we needed to put uh, five items. Now, this, if not, the, the main item is, is he qualified? He was never qualified. I mean, that's for the tribunal to, to prove. I said he it. was never qualified. And the tribunal knows it, everybody knows it, even the child on the street knows it. But unfortunately, today the perception outside is that the judges cannot do anything. And it's true. But I believe, you see, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, we all have a quiet moment where you stay with your God. And God? Your quiet moment, yeah. where you're there, is where you're God. That's what I mean by quiet moment. Okay. Where you'll be going around and you'll be judging yourself. Have I done well today? The way I treated that person, no, I didn't do well. The good people say, I'll go and apologize to him. Everybody has a quiet moment. You're in Louis, that's by the time you enter your bedroom. Your mind will just start... Nobody will act it. So are you staking the outcome of the tribunal on the individual's conscience as opposed to the merits of your because, case? No, 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 no. After looking at the merits, they will not sit there and say, oh. Then they also look at Nigerians. That's an interesting thing. But, do you know what Mela used to say? That if you say the truth, you die. If you don't say the truth, you die. So it's better to say the truth and die. We expect them. 
I was asking you about Kogi, speaking of Dinomila, I was asked you about Kogi. Kogi, yeah. you were saying Bayasa is a PDP state, but Kogi is not at the moment. But the, 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 the governor Graham has given it to us. If we get our ass right and get the right card, we'll get it. It's a fair state. That young man, you know, we're talking about young taking over our responsibility. I was one of those. I was like, this is young. But by the time you give us a response, the way we behave is sad. Mm. Very sad. But in spite of that, we still need the youths. Mm. And they're seriously lacking in this new. Oh, in, this in this new government, they're seriously <laughs> lacking. Man. Minister of Youth and Lima Sports is, is a 52-year-old man. The youngest person is 43 or 44 but years this is old. Really young, 44. Yeah. 44 years old. So if we don't even have the representation of the largest group of people in the country, can we just say that we're genuinely a failed state? No, we're not a failed state. We're, we're a failed state. No, we're not. I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you, do you know what's keeping Nigeria moving? Not a failed state. You know what's keeping Nigeria moving? What is? What's Nigeria moving today is that uh, we're going to get back the bandit. You know, Nigeria will crash. Nigeria will not crash. Uh, when we started with recession, there was all kinds of uh, statistics that they gave to us. Where are we today? They should you, just wake why, up. Why is uh, uh, the PDP presidential candidate yeah. um, not in the country? Good. Is he officially on exile? Uh, no. Because all the stories we read about him, people going to visit him in uh, Dubai. Does yeah. he have a dual citizenship? No, he doesn't. Is uh, Dubai the right place for him to be no. when there is a, a major issue involving his, uh, you know, mandate in court? Let me, uh, let you me know, going on in the country. With what happened with is it a strategy? Yes. Let me ask you what happened to uh, Ambani two days ago. If not that the pet people did what they did, they would have set him up. This government has done so much to show that they want to implicate him. In all chances, even till now. So the man, you see, that was the mistake Abella made. And he died. We don't need the matters in this country because they do, if they die, they will cannot use them in the future. If Abella had not died, he would have been the president. They killed him. If I think we had no kill him. Because these guys don't have mercy. They don't. When I see some of our living PDP, the guy in there, that's good. No way. They'll kill you. They will deal with you. That's quite an allegation. Allegation? Yes, because you are calling them murderers. Yes. No, what does they care? That means if they're just shooting you or no. I'm not, it's not like they're being like one. They will frustrate you to the point that you are almost a dead man. Like in the country, where most of us are dead now. You can see a whole man ask you, sir, can you give me 5,000 there? This is a man who has been, been doing charity. The man is already dead. What are you talking about? Your own, your own. Because I know that they are going to come after their own. People were laughing when I said it. Why would you, what has somebody done? That they said you were carrying back to go and put something in his house. No, they've Another denied that. The That's EFCC has denied that. Well. You expect that. Yeah, the, the are they going to accept it for? Are they going to accept it? They will not accept it. Look, you go to a man say, oh, oh, was somebody there? Was somebody there? No, no. A man is not like, oh, you are going to do this. Why don't you wait for him? That's what they do. You heard Atiku's, uh, 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 what do you call His finance officer, his lawyer. For the PDP, were the strongest critics of this administration, saying that the anti-corruption war is one-sided. Now that they're trying to investigate their own, you're criticizing what? that. No, you don't know. I'm telling you about the way they set up these things to divert your attention, make you feel that they're also after their own. But they are, they are after Ambode now. They are after Okorocha. That's the point she's making. Mm -hmm. And these are not members of the PDP. So that criticism is no longer valid. <laughs> you know, you see, the APC, you don't understand the APC. Uh, five parties from the APC. The real party is CPC. Mm. I want to see them possible CPC people. Then I'll believe them. 
I'm, I'm breaking it for you now to understand. Just as seven ministers came from the Northwest. Nine, actually, plus the president, ten. The North is also have the numbers. If you want to talk about those who voted for him by the calculation, what does happen to the North East? You, you see, Nigeria will not be saying this today if the country was working well. We'll not be talking about zoning, uh, regionalism, and so on. Because like America, America has gone past it. Not quite. No, what I mean in choosing who is a minister. Oh, okay. You can choose your president, nobody will say anything. No, no, look at uh, Boris Johnson. UK. Uh, nobody will just say, Johnson it's not so president. here because, because, because we have not. Joe, Joe Johnson. Mm -hmm. It has not gone around, so we always feel cheated. I don't know what I'm saying. If something has gone around, okay, no, let's not go around again. Let's look for the best. Until then, anything you do, you must be conscious of it. <laughs> if anybody was a, look, if he wanted to have his way, he would have taken money from his place. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care about your feeling. He is also caged in the villa. He doesn't come outside. You, you know what I found out about leaders, what they do to them? And President Jonathan was there, it also happened. The program is so tight that you don't have 10 minutes to look at the, 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 the back door. Everything is just on precision. No. Sometimes when you travel, you need to see these things yourself. What you see is documentation in your front. The president is taking from the airport to the hotel. From the hotel, he goes into the meeting. He has not seen the other side of the country he has gone to. Look, well, it's a question of style. Presidents have different no, styles. No, it's the way the handlers do it. The handlers are deliberate. Yeah, but nobody could, could imprison uh, President Obasanjo when he was there. That's what he did well. You know, Obasanjo, before you turn back, he's there. He's, Obasanjo is a grassroots man. I'll give you an example. Sometime in 2009, we went to um, Trinidad and Tobago for the uh, Commonwealth Business Forum. We all lodged the, the vessel, this big ship. I said, no, I need to go out and find out what's going on. I went out. I got a taxi. And I just started talking to him. I said, oh, good afternoon, sir. You're welcome to my country. They started talking. Taxi driver. He said, oh, they told him that VIPs were coming to the country. So they were told to uh, take care of us. I was impressed. And he was discussing this country. He a taxi driver. I said, no, you don't be a very inquisitive person. I went to the hotel. I said, okay, you know, I'm new. I stuck up in the cheap. Uh, I need to beat a girl. I'll pay. I gave him $100. And I have a brother there. I said, hey, you look so nice. I want to take you to my country, Nigeria. You know what you told me? What am I going to do today? Your packet, your packet is so small. Man, it's twenty thousand dollars. Ooh, I thought a street girl. Who gladly say, let me follow you. But if I ask a girl in Nigeria today, what will she tell you? I've been looking for a go. I've been looking for a way to get out of this country. Chief, you mean when you travel, you check out the girls that, in the place. No, really you really also do job. that also in Nigeria. No, because when we entered, when we came there... Because Etunu will look at you now and say, well, you no, are no, old, no, no, you no, should no. have retired. No, I'm just trying to tell you... No, I'm trying to tell you what happened. I finished with the taxi driver. Yeah. The, the wealth of knowledge he had. I said, okay, let me see the street girl who have that kind of knowledge. I didn't take her to the room. It was right there. I was just like, well, I said, look, I want you to follow me to Nigeria. He told me about my life. I was so ashamed of myself. He said the per capita income of a country is twenty thousand dollars. That mine is less than four thousand. Ooh, this is a terrible thing. But, but said, today, you said a Nigerian girl, we say, make could they go? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. She's no, good. Different no, Nigerian no, women. I'm just in shock. It's very hard. I don't have to process right now. No, what, what I just. <laughs> <laughs> What, what I meant is that, because the situation is so bad today, people, people are looking for greener pasture. You see the story of uh, what is happening to our guys? You take them out there to walk in Dubai, they, they, they turn them to something else. Very sad for us.
Well, but if the economy was good, parents would not have allowed that. Hey, now, Thank, Giddy, you, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> you know, we'll bring this to a close <laughs> on that humorous note. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah.